Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation and thank you for the flexibility. These last weeks of the parliamentarian work in Denmark, they are always awful. We work around the clock and uh, there are negotiations, there are meetings in the parliament, there are the last laws to be adopted or the opposite and, uh, and therefore it is very hard to tell exactly when you are free to, to have what is really interesting in politics, the real dialogue with people like you and let me also take the opportunity to welcome all of our guests uh, to Copenhagen and to Denmark. We are grateful and we are proud that you have taken the travel to our country. Ladies and gentlemen, religion is very often accused for being the very reason for conflicts, not least in the Middle East. The reason and the fuel of conflict in the Middle East. I will argue today that actually you could argue that religion has the potential for being the peacemaker, for being the potential of actually getting into a situation where a lasting peace agreement, both when it comes to Palestine and Israel, when it comes to the Syrian conflict, and when it comes to the ever going on conflict between Saudi Arabia and Iran, actually religion could also play the opposite role. Because in all the religions which are represented in the Middle East, you have the, so to speak, the spirit of peace, the call for peace, and the potential for peace. Now, for a politician like myself, of course, the very big question is, how do we get from the situation today where religion is abused by extremism, by governments, by dictatorships, to give legitimization for conflicts into a situation where we can use interfaith dialogue and freedom of religion in uh, the case and in the battle for peace, democracy and freedom to all human beings. Not only in the Middle East, but of course also in other parts of the world. To me there are two key, um, I would say, recommendations which we will have to look into if we have to shift from religion being the cause and being abused in the, in the um, case of conflicts into a situation where we can use interfaith dialogue uh, in peace uh, resolutions. The first thing, of course, is the fundamental right of freedom of faith. If we don't recognize all beliefs, all religions, and their right to exist and be practiced, we can never use religion as a force of peace, democracy, and freedom. So that's basics, and that goes for all religions in all countries. The second thing, then, which is probably the most difficult part of it, would be how we strengthen the interfaith dialogue and the extremist use and misuse and abuse of religion in their own power-taking solution. My own assessment, uh, I had paid a lot of visits to the Middle East during my time in office as foreign minister, and in Denmark, as well as many other Western countries, many of the conflicts in uh, the Middle East, they are seen upon as religious conflicts. My own assessment and deep belief is that to a very, very large extent, all the conflicts in the Middle East are of a more geopolitical nature and a more political nature than of a religious nature. That goes for the Palestine-Israeli conflicts, uh, which is actually a fight against territory. Who has the right for the land? How should that land be divided? And how and which and who should have the right to use the land? Much more than it actually is a conflict between the Jewish population and the Muslim population. If you look into the big battles in Syria, we all know that behind the conflict, we have proxy wars going on 
which to a very large extent could be taken uh, into the very for century lasting conflict between the Sunni Muslim Saudi Arabia and the Shia Muslim Iran. And today you could argue that it is still this geopolitical big power game going on, uh, who should control which oil fields, which oil and gas pipelines, who should control in military terms the whole territory of Syria, that is actually the real reason behind the ongoing and ongoing and ongoing conflict in Syria, but also the emerge of the so-called Islamic State, which has nothing to do with the state and nothing to do with the Islamic religion. But even though this is the hard facts, if I'm correct in my assessment, it's also a fact that religion and also the religious wars between Sunni and Shias through history, they are being used or maybe abused, misused, very unfortunately, talentfully by both parties and by the extremism in giving legitimacy to their own games. I consider myself the Dash as a simple criminal organization. I am rather convinced that the very core of Dash is a mafia who are going for their own economic and very narrow interest. But of course they are using or misusing the religion in their efforts to gain power, to recruit young people, to recruit basic uh, power behind their struggles to benefit themselves. And here comes the extremely important roles of you. Because so many people want to misuse religions. And we have seen that on the European continent as well during the Balkan civil wars. And the strongest weapon we have against this misuse of religion is religion itself. Because the people who can really get in contact and in touch, the people who can hopefully convince the young people that misguided and misled by the extremism into these armed conflicts, are the people who themselves believe, who themselves have the right and peacefully interpretation of the religions. And therefore, the biggest mistake we can do as politicians, that goes for Denmark as well as for the Middle East, is to fuel by our own hate speeches about religion as such, fuel the extremism causes. What we need is to go into a dialogue with people who believe and convince them that in their religion, the peace message is stronger, more forceful, and more rightly than the people who claims it is the opposite, that in religion lies the message of conflicts and to compact other beliefs. And therefore, I'm deeply convinced that when it comes to fight against extremism in my own country, our most important allies are the Imams, are the people who are active in the religious societies in a peaceful, rightly manner, and they are the ones who have the best chance to reach out to young people who are in fear of actually getting into the extremism groups. And in the Middle East, you have an enormous important task in getting into an interfaith dialogue and showing, demonstrating that actually people who believe have more in common than people that don't believe. And I am very sure that in the core of Daesh, people don't believe, they don't have a faith. The only faith they have is the faith of their own benefit. So I hope that you will have success in your efforts. I know that is why you are here today. And I hope that the Danish government and the Danish parliament will be able to contribute to your work. Sometimes when I hear the commitments from our present government, I'm not so sure how committed they are. On the other hand, I also recognize that still we have funds for your work, still we have the possibilities, and if I have any power in my hand, 
in the years to come that will be to support that work. I wish you all the luck and I thank you for your commitments. I think they are more important than ever. Thank you very much.